right now the los angeles lakers sit with the best las vegas odds at the start of the bubble to take home the nba championship this is a defining season for the legacy of lebron james but what does the future of this team look like that's what we look into in this video but if y'all want to see more videos like this smash that like button if this video gets 5,000 likes i'm going to start posting two videos a week with this as a weekly series but with all that said let's get into it Let's start this off by looking at the Lakers' current situation. Right now, they sit as the number one seed in the Western Conference going into the bubble. They've had to deal with some big losses recently, including Avery Bradley and Rajon Rondo, but regardless, are one of the favorites to win the title and the frontrunner in the eyes of many. They are led by the incredible duo of one of the greatest players of all time in LeBron James and one of the most dominant two-way big men we've ever seen in Anthony Davis. The Lakers signed LeBron in the summer of 2018, and since then, despite having a promising young core, we're eager to form a competitive roster as it's not every day you get your hands on a player of LeBron's caliber. So when the opportunity arose to get a player like Anthony Davis, they jumped on it. They give up most of the young core they had formed since the post-Kobe era. They gave up the fourth overall pick in last year's draft, former second overall pick Brandon Ingram, who's now a 24-point in-game scorer. Lonzo Ball has emerged as one of the most well-rounded young point guards in this league. Josh Hart, and an additional two more first-round pick slash pick swaps. Based on what these young players have become since the trade, it was quite a lot, but that doesn't mean that LA should regret their decision, especially if they manage to bring him a title with Davis on this team. We know how great he is, but let's look a little closer into his future. Right now, he only has one year remaining on his contract, unless he picks up his player option for next season. There was a lot of talk about Davis potentially not staying on this team for long after he reportedly declined a four-year, $146 million contract extension, but this really means nothing at all and the media just took advantage of this for a good headline once he becomes a free agent this offseason he's eligible for a five-year 200 million dollar contract but he might not even take that two years from now davis will have spent 10 years in the league making him eligible for a contract worth 35 percent of the salary cap while everyone likes to think of all the possibilities of davis playing for another team we really have no reason to believe he won't be on the lakers for the future when he wanted out of New Orleans, the Lakers were his desired destination. Since being there, he's only spoken highly of that team and organization. We consistently see positive reports for the future of Davis with this team. ESPN reported Davis has long indicated privately that he plans to sign a new contract with the Lakers once he becomes eligible for free agency in 2020. Woj himself said, nobody believes Anthony Davis is not staying with the Lakers. So despite whatever contract he signs this summer, Lakers fans have nothing to worry about. He's just going to sign what he feels is going to secure him the biggest bag possible while still remaining on the Los Angeles Lakers. So I think it's pretty clear Davis will be on this team, but who will he be playing with? LeBron? The next couple years are going to be very interesting for LeBron James. Right now, he's got one year left on his contract with a player option after that. He's currently 35 years old and still arguably the best player in the world. And that's not something we see very often. But then again, we don't see players like LeBron James very often. Assuming he can stay healthy, I still think he's got around two years left as the player we know. I think he's going to be around after that. He just might not necessarily be an MVP candidate like he is today. I really think LeBron James has established himself as a Laker and will be shocked if we see him leave this team before his son Bronny comes to the NBA. It's been well reported for years now that one of LeBron James's goals is to share the court with his son, LeBron James Jr. Bronny right now is going into his sophomore season of high school, meaning he'll be eligible for the 2024 draft. That's assuming the league doesn't get rid of the one and done rule or Bronny doesn't reclassify before then. While it would be awesome to see Bronny join his father on the Lakers, that's not going to be easy to pull off. And LeBron is most likely going to set himself up to be a free agent when it comes time for Bronny's draft year. So it's hard to say where LeBron's going to be in 2004, but right now, Anthony Davis and LeBron James look like they're going to be Lakers for the foreseeable future. But who will they be sharing the court with? The Lakers have a very unique structure of their contracts, given there's not a single player locked up for the 2021 season. The only player that could potentially be on their current contract is LeBron James, who has a player option for that year. This means we're going to see some crazy, crazy rumors leading up to the summer of 2021. If they strategically time the new contracts of both Anthony Davis and LeBron James, we could see another big name 
added to this roster to get an idea of just how many crazy names that could be available in 2021 we've got Giannis Antetokounmpo, Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, Rudy Gobert, Chris Paul, Blake Griffin, Victor Oladipo, Bradley Beal, just to name a few. This allows us to think of some crazy scenarios. Chris Paul will be at the age where it's hard to imagine him getting a big contract. He takes a solid deal and teams up with Carmelo Anthony and LeBron James, bringing in three members of the infamous Banana Boat squad. LeBron and the Lakers have established themselves as the top team in LA over the next couple seasons, and one of Paul George or Kawhi Leonard hop on the bandwagon. Giannis decides to form the greatest big three of all time. Rudy Gobert and Anthony Davis form the greatest defensive frontcourt in NBA history. Now, obviously, these aren't the most realistic scenarios in the world, but given how the money is dispersed currently on this Lakers roster, things could get crazy. I really hope they plan ahead this offseason and don't hurt their possibilities in 2021. Now, while it's fun to think about the crazy scenarios like Giannis joining the Lakers, let's actually look at the money. Let's say Anthony Davis signs his five-year contract extension, adding around $41 million a season to the Lakers' books. Let's also say LeBron James picks up his player option in 2021, which is again around $41 million. The current cap, which is subject to change, is $125 million, meaning they would have around $43 million in cap, obviously meaning they could sign just about anyone they wanted. But again, it's not that simple. Kyle Kuzma is going to be a restricted free agent, putting a $10 million cap hold on their books, and they also have $5 million in dead money from Luol Deng's contract. This means they would have around $33 million in cap space, which is probably enough to land guys like Blake Griffin, DeMar DeRozan, and Victor Oladipo, but most likely not enough for the top guys like Giannis and Bradley Beal. But this doesn't mean it's impossible. If it looks like there's a real chance to land one of these top guys, there's some things they could do. They could renounce the rights of Kyle Kuzma and just let him walk as an unrestricted free agent, which is an interesting scenario as that's going to put quite a lot of pressure on Kuzma during the bubble and going into next season. LeBron could decline his player option and just take a short-term deal, then get a new contract the following season when the Lakers can use his bird rights. A top free agent could just take a pay cut and form a super team. Given how Kyle Kuzma has played after what was an extremely promising rookie campaign and LeBron's chase for the greatest player of all time, it's actually pretty likely, in my opinion, that they can free up some serious cash next summer. Because of this, I would expect the Lakers to do everything in their power to hold on to Kostas onto Dekumpo. Now, if we continue this series, for most teams, we're going to be talking a lot more about their young talent, but the Lakers don't really have much of that. They've got Kyle Kuzma, who had one of the best summer league performances we've ever seen, then was a 37% three-point shooter as a rookie, but since then, he's just seemed to regress. Obviously, his share in the offense has been reduced, but he's now averaging less than 13 points and five rebounds, shooting a disappointing 43% from the field and 30% from three. As we talked about before, there's actually a decent chance he's just not on this team after his rookie contract, and he really isn't even that young. He's 25 years old, just two years younger than Anthony Davis. The other young guys are Kosas Antetokounmpo and Taylor Horton Tucker, who we really haven't seen at all this season, and the expectations going forward aren't that high. Right now, the focus is clearly not on young talent, which is completely fine. The last thing I want to talk about is the draft, another element the Lakers have a lot less involvement in compared to teams we're going to talk about at a later date. Right now, the Los Angeles Lakers do have their 29th pick in the 2020 draft, but it really wouldn't be a surprise if they just let this pick go. Depending on how things shake out, if they actually hold on to this selection, there's some extremely high upside guys like Jaden McDaniels and Cassius Stanley that could be available and at points of the year were projected much higher than this. They could also get guys more ready to make an impact like Trey Jones or Grant Riller. The Lakers have done pretty well at the end of the first round recently with guys like Josh Hart and Kyle Kuzma, so let's not count on the potential impact of this selection. For their future selections, there's not too much to get excited about. Their pick next summer goes to New Orleans, but it's protected 8 to 30, so they're actually most likely going to get it and have to give their 2022 pick unprotected. New Orleans also has the right to swap picks in 2023, and they have the Lakers first in 2024 with the option to instead take their pick in 2025. The Lakers also have all three of their second round picks for the next three seasons outgoing. After the failed Dwight Howard and Steve Nash super teams and Kobe's injuries, the focus for this team was on young talent, and it was pretty exciting. They brought in top picks such as D'Angelo Russell, Lonzo Ball, 
and Brandon Ingram. That's changed drastically though. Their focus on winning a title in this LeBron James window, which means the future for this team is extremely exciting in the short term, but the long-term future is really up in the air. But that's the interview, guys. I really have fun looking at depth at teams' futures. So if you guys like the video, go crazy on the like button and tell me in the comments below. And the shoutouts are gonna be Jackson, Jack, D Wade, Ty, and Josh. If you guys want to shout out in the next video, all you gotta do is like the video and comment liked or rep notification squad. And I'll shout five of you guys out. With all that being said, hope you guys have a great day and peace.